So we were talking about uh, incomplete crimes, right? And we use a very specific word to describe incomplete crimes. In it, right? We talked about attempts primarily. In fact, I think that's all we all we talked about was attempts. So what do we need? How do we build an attempt and prove an attempt? <clears throat> One, I mean, I already said part of it. It's an incomplete crime, right? If we complete it, for the most part, if we complete the crime, we don't have, we don't need the attempt. For most crimes, you can still have an attempt. Uh, some crimes, if you complete the crime, you still have that that attempt crime as well. You can, uh, in general, you could murder somebody and also have an attempt murder in there. But what's the point in charging that? And then you have other crimes where you have battery, where the attempt is actually a separate crime in and of, and of itself, and which is. What's the attempt version of battery? Assault. Assault. So, so we assault is an attempt battery. So, uh, you rarely in, in, in very few jurisdictions are you going to hear attempted battery because incorporated into the law of assault is an attempted battery. But there is no uh, law in and of itself for like attempted murder. There, uh, there is no standalone law of that. So we have murder and then attempt murder. Uh, as far as exposure and sentencing goes, how does the how deep we get into the crime affects the exposure to sentencing? What's going to get us in more trouble? The beginning of the plan or right at the end? We the deeper you get into it, the more exposure you have, and, and sentencing and whatnot. Uh, what about the act? I mean, we, we need to we need to have some sort of uh, convergence, right? We have our mens rea and our uh, actus reus. We have to have a convergence. So our mens rea is easy in an attempt. We already decided we we're going to do this crime. Where is our if we didn't complete the crime? Where is our actus reus? Yeah, in, in 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 getting to the proximity. So the the movement itself to get it. So we said we needed a significant step towards committing the crime. If we don't have a significant step towards committing the crime, and remember those that terminology, we're going to talk about it again in conspiracy. Um, we, don't have a we don't have a temp crime, and therefore we don't have a crime. Was that a hand or just a... Sure. <laughs> Another late night. Uh, as far as attempts, what are our defenses? Our, our primary defense against uh, charge of attempt. We have two of them. There are two primary ways we can defend ourselves if we're accused of attempting a crime. Abandonment. Which means what? Um, to avoid coming. Sure. So, uh, give me, tell me a story, make up a story where somebody abandons their uh, attempt. Um. Like, if I wanted to steal a car and then, like, I started walking towards it and then I see an officer and that just walked away. Okay. So, how, does that change at all if you don't see the officer? If you walk away, not because you saw the officer, but because you walked away on your own? Um, Makes that a little more solid of a defense, I, I would say, because. They're going to say their inner that was them you seeing them was the intervention from the beginning of the intervention and so you didn't necessarily abandon it as well as you could have whereas if you were going to steal that car and then you thought nah come to jesus moment and i'm not going to steal this car in fact i'm going to buy these people another car and you go and leave to go to the car lot to go buy them a car and then the police kind of scoop you up you're like what i, I stopped i abandoned that behavior i stopped that behavior long before i saw you you didn't stop me. I stopped me. <laughs> that would be a really good, good event. Uh, what is our other defense? Some sort of inability. It's, uh, it'd be an impossible. Right. A factual impossibility. Um, Zoe. 
what would be, can you create a crime where the result would have been a factual impossibility? What's a crime that you would try, but then can later find out there's just no way you could have done it? Yeah, I think we could get behind that. I'm picking up what you're putting down here. What if, let's see, well, what if you try to steal a car? If you're like, I have the goal of starting this car and driving it away. But when you get, you know, right as you get there, the police scoop you up. And they're saying, oh, you attempted to steal that car. You, you know, you, you had your, your hand on the handle, the door's unlocked, and you're, you're fixing to steal it. But then later your attorney finds out, well, that car didn't even have an engine in it. Could you have could you have driven that car away? No. You didn't have a tow truck with you. So it's a factual impossibility for you to have successfully stolen that car. But they would still charge you. So that I'm very important question. Like that's the number one time. Yeah, it's impossible for me to beat you over the head with a turkey that can kill you. Turkey that can kill you. Yes. I mean, <laughs> okay. Depends on how big the turkey is and how close there is, I guess. That was one of the questions. <laughs> Did you see that? I guess yeah. you could have some sort of turkey battery. <laughs> um, like, but but, but you, no, you, know, it, it you would be very difficult. Mind, you never did it. Uh -huh. So, um, but the police knew of it, but actually they don't have a crime because it was impossible, right? Right. Okay. There's no, that's a defense. I We use defenses because in order to be a valid defense, you have to be in court to, to provide a defense. You don't provide a defense to an officer. So in our yeah. scenarios, you always get arrested so that you can be in court to provide that defense. Mm -hmm. There are opportunities or uh, instances where perhaps the investigator is not as aware of the circumstances of the crime as yeah. the defense. In this case, maybe they did a shoddy investigation. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, you know, it, it, it could be a, a burglary where they say the uh, the door had damage to, to it. So I arrested, you know, you're standing by the door. Uh, these guys said you kicked in the door. And when I when the police got there, you're standing by a door that's been kicked in. Is it reasonable for, you, for the police to believe that, that you kicked in the door? If there's a witness that said you did it, the door has been kicked in and damaged the door and you're standing next to it. Right. Well, I've seen that situation. And in that situation, they said that, that somebody did it. They were lying. The person was standing by a door that was kicked in, but come to find out further investigation revealed by the defense, the defense was able to find out that that door had been the subject of a search warrant a few days earlier. So the door had been kicked in, but it was by the police. So all the police, the, the other police had to go on was, you're standing by a door that looks like it's been kicked in, and these people said you kicked it in. Reasonability, right? We talk about probable causes, what a reasonable person would believe. It, you don't have to be 100% correct. And in the situation that, that I'm telling you, the example I told you, uh, it turns out, and the defense was the one that brought it up, that they were able to show evidence that no, th this door was kicked in, but not by my client. It was kicked in by the police of all people because they had a search warrant a couple of days ago. These guys who said that the, they, this other person kicked it in are liars and drug dealers, and they were the subject of this search warrant, and they wanted to get this guy in trouble. Did it work initially? Yeah, the guy, the guy got in trouble, but right. But then the defense was able to show. It. Yes. Doesn't mean that necessarily the officers that came the first time did a shoddy investigation. They used everything that was in front of them, and I'm sure the the guy standing by that door was like, I don't know, I didn't kick in the door. What do you know? It was already kicked in when I got here. Sure, it was. It's hard to believe, but then you 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 bring out that evidence, and that, that's why we have trials. That's why we have an adversarial system so that both sides can present it. All right. Any questions on attempts? Let's go to conspiracies. Anybody have an idea what, what, a, what to start off with? What is a conspiracy? A criminal conspiracy, not a, not a conspiracy theory. It's together and plan to do a crime. Yeah, pretty much. When, when two or more people get together and plan to do a crime, with a few other, uh, few other factors, but in general, that, that's what we have. So we had uh, previously the incomplete crime was because 
we were going to, I think I used the remote control. I was going to steal the remote control and something happened, something there's an intervention and I never got an opportunity. In this case, it's not just one person. In order, the very most basic element of conspiracy, you have to have more than one person. But then what is rule kind of throw me off with that? You know, uh, it says provide for a targeted crime by a very nature takes more than one person to commit, then there can be no conspiracy. So it takes two people to to put it together, but one but uh, but two people uh, commit the crime is not a conspiracy. Let me get back to that. Okay. I will. Give me <laughs> 20 minutes if I were a betting man. All right. <laughs> She's asking about Warden's rule if you didn't hear. We'll come back to Warden's rule. Oh, we didn't get there yet, huh? I just started. <laughs> I just finished my review. I, I, some things just hold my attention up as I'm going around. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> All right. Warden's rule. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, let's, I, I like using stories. It's going to be a story. So if I if we're all in this room and we use the remote control again, we all really want that remote control. And uh, maybe there's a box and we can all split these remote controls and we say, here's what we're gonna do. We all sit together and we plan and say, tonight, when everybody leaves, there's no recruitment event tonight, so the place is gonna be empty. We're all gonna break in the door and one at a time, and one of us is going to uh scout the location out and one of us is going to uh, be a distraction for security and one of us is going to go to uh, Lowe's Hardware and get a pro cry, pro cry bar, crowbar uh, and we all just have a job and we're all just in on this and we say that sounds like that sounds great let's do it and we all agree to a person that yes that's a good idea and we're going to do it do we have a crime yet no, yes. So definitely no or yes. <laughs> it is definitely one of those. Is it an attempt? Do we have an attempt yet? So let's define attempt. Attempt is we need a significant step towards and be dangerously close. Are we dangerously close to stealing these remote controls yet? Yeah. So far, we're just talking. In general, with some exceptions, so far, we're just talking. So we need that significant step again. I told you we were going to come back and talk to that uh, in conspiracy. It's very important to have that. That furtherance is another term, that significant step toward the crime. So merely because this is a, we have a defensible situation in the story that I told initially. I was just joshing, man. It was we just it was fantasy. We like talking about burglaries, it's fun. But the moment you take that significant step towards it, let's talk about who who takes that significant step. So this is a really complicated scenario on purpose that I created. Uh, Josh, are you out there? You and I are going to commit a crime. I was in Vegas last weekend, got into a little bit of trouble. And there's a witness that needs to go away. We need to make that happen. So we're going to go to get Vegas. And we're going to agree to go to Vegas and make that happen. We're going to kidnap this, this person and, uh, and take him out in the desert and scare him. We agree to that. And now we're kind of in the same situation as that first story, right? We, we talked about it. We, we, we agreed upon it. There's going to be a crime. But do we have a crime yet? And I'm asking these two because it's the, the mens rea is. The mens rea, the, the intent is there. We have, Joshua, we have the intent so far, right? Absolutely. We, we agreed. We're talking it over because we have so much intent that we have a plan. What does that mean? Y'all going to murder I'm sorry? What means the act to be y'all going to murder Sure, sure. So if we, now, if we do fly to Vegas and our, our uh, victim is, uh, is it the, the Stratosphere Hotel? We go to the Stratosphere Hotel with some, some bags and ropes. And we go to that person's room. And then either uh, we can't get in the room or, or the police come. 
Do we have an attempt? Yeah, I think we have a significant step towards that attempt because we never got it finished. However, when it comes to conspiracy, let's back off from that. Let's not get so far into the, the plan. We just need a, a significant step towards it. We don't need to be dangerously close. Well, so close. that was dangerous and close. So that that is a, that's an I would call that an attempt to whatever crime we're kidnapping. Uh, but how about uh, Joshua and I talk it over, and then we go to Lowe's Hardware and buy some some ropes. This is the question for your one question quiz this week. The question is: What are the three inchoate crimes we discussed? Write your answer into the one question quiz and submit it. So this person's in Vegas. Joshua and I go to the, the Lowe's hardware here in here in Smithfield. So we had we had mens rea, which was the, the intent, that, there's no doubt. And then we made a significant step to show our furtherance. Because that was that significant step, it's so easy for me to say. Uh, Josh and I, we we joke around about this stuff all the time. We, we weren't gonna do it. That's crazy talk. Who, who goes to Vegas and kidnaps somebody? That's come on. But then when we have that plan and somebody overhears us talking about that plan, and then we both go to Lowe's Hardware and we buy rope, is it as easy for me to say we were just joking? Yeah. No, we bought some rope. Like we were, we talked about it and then we did something to further in furtherance of that crime so we never completed it for whatever reason i think the reason this story we don't think you don't need a reason why it was not completed the fact that we came up with a plan we two or more people decided on a criminal act decided to commit a criminal act and then committed a significant act in furtherance of that crime then we have conspiracy but what about this there's always another what about What if I go to Lowe's? Joshua and I decide to do this crime of kidnapping, and he's like, "Yeah, sounds good. Um, we'll, we'll we'll do it. We'll do it uh, in a month." And then I get a little impatient, and I go to Lowe's now because I don't want to I don't want to run out of time next month. And he, I never told him I was going to Lowe's, but I go get the rope. Let's break down the, the elements. What do we need? We need two or more people agreeing upon a crime and then an act of furtherance towards that crime. Do we have all those? Unfortunately, we do. Unfortunately for him, we do. You could be responsible for the other party in the conspiracy's act of furtherance after you agree to that act. He is now a party to this conspiracy. Even though he didn't act, and even if he changed his mind, but he was, but he was part of the of the planet. Right. So we'll touch on that. Yeah, in fact, I'm going to touch on that in just a second. If you have changed mind, so there is a an incident where two brothers they conspire with each other to run moonshine, and whatever whatever it takes to, to conspire. We need uh, we need to get some moon. We need to make some moonshine. We need to sell it. We need to. Uh, Avoid the police, like whatever the plan was, they, they came out. They sat down and came up with a plan. It was crazy in their own home, and they conspired to commit uh, unlawful trafficking of moonshine. But before they could actually do the plan, one of them gets put in jail. And he's just in jail for something unrelated to the moonshine. He, he did something else stupid and went to jail. Well, then the brother, who's still out, Gets the still, gets the car, and starts running motion. Then we have two or more people conspiring to commit a criminal act. Yes. Running with China is a criminal act, whatever, whatever crime that is. Two more people. Do we have an act in furtherance? Yes. Yeah. The one brother who's out. Not so much. Even so far, the act of furtherance, he actually started doing it. Did the person in jail run moonshine? Can be can the person in jail, the brother in jail, can they be arrested for running moonshine? But can they be re-arrested and charged with conspiracy to commit mm -hmm. moonshine running? Mm -hmm. Heck yeah. The courts upheld that. He fought it. He appealed. He said, what are you talking about? I, I, I was in jail. I didn't how I literally couldn't do anything. But the elements are 
They, could, they discussed a crime, they came to an agreement to commit a crime, and then there was an act of furtherance. It doesn't matter who commits that act. The only way, like Anita was saying, is you have to back out. So there's very specific ways to back out. In fact, I'm going to grab it. So there's very specific ways that you can back out. It, it, being arrested did not fulfill those ways. Changing your mind in and of itself, not enough. Anybody read in the chapter where what you have to do to absolve yourself of conspiracy? You have to be 40. You do. That's how you absolve yourself of a conspiracy. So once you come to that plan and agree to commit an unlawful act with two or more people, and then there's an act of, well, if you wait until there's an act of furtherance, now you're already guilty of that crime, right? You can absolve yourself all you want. You can remove yourself. Once they have the act of furtherance, you've already committed the crime of conspiracy. But before that act of furtherance, if you want to remove yourself or absolve yourself from that crime, you have to report it to the police. But even though he was in jail and brother went on to those and what the broker and stuff, once brother went on and did that, he said, Mom. Bought and paid. Even if he still chose to get to, to report it. Afterward, well, if you, if you report it, there may be that may be mitigating right. and it may be a defense in his favor that he didn't know when the act of furtherance was going to occur. He never had an opportunity to report it. But in general, he's already, by definition, he's already guilty of he's met the elements of conspiracy. Mm -hmm. Now, if he reports it after that to the police, that's up to the prosecutor whether or not they want to file any charges or they act or can act as a, as a witness or. Or maybe that will count as absolving, but in you know, by definition, if you wait till after the act in furtherance, you've already committed the crime. And as we learned, you don't even have to know because the guy in jail, maybe he had no idea. I, I don't know if the brother in jail still knew if his other brother was going to run the moonshine or not without him. Uh, but in in his defense, what he was defending himself with was there was no way I could have been involved. Yeah, we talked about it, but then my brother was the one who went off and did it. But just act in prison, just an act in prison. Let's say two acts or an act for everybody. So, so conspiracy, but not the act of crime. Exactly. So, I'm, we can talk to you again. I don't want to. I don't want to look all weird and go back to Vegas. But I was already there. It's going to look a little suspicious if I go back. But Joshua wasn't in Vegas last weekend. <coughs> So I, I I sell Josh on this uh, Joshua on this Josh or Joshua. Mm -hmm. All right, I sell this guy on uh, on conspiracy. I say, hey, this guy. I, I tell him the whole story. He says, sounds good. Let's do it. Let's kidnap him. I say, I can't do it though. Said, All right, it's cool. I'll take care of it. Joshua says, I'll take care of it. Uh, and then Joshua goes to Lowe's. Do we have a conspiracy? Did no. Josh goes loads by truck. We agreed that the crime should be committed. We planned it. I told him where this guy was going to be found. I told him what time he was going to be there, what he looks like, and I gave him a picture of this guy. Yeah. Once, once we have an act of furtherance, we've completed that conspiracy. So we are conspiring to, to commit a crime. I, we each have our, our uh, parts of the discussion, and then Joshua goes and, and does an act of furtherance. Are we guilty of conspiracy? Yes. Okay. I agree. But yes. So, like, if you say you couldn't do it, but he said you could, how would it be? Would it be because it's your plan? It's my plan. I gave him a picture. I told him where the guy's going to be. I, I came up with the idea. I'm involved in this plan. That's why I'm I'm part of the conspiracy. Um, and you charge the solicitation to it. So, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. So, then Joshua is like, well, I'm not flying to Vegas alone. And this guy looked kind of big. So, Jaden and Deloria, you guys, he comes to you guys and says, hey, help me out. We're just going to do a kidnap real quick. I just need some muscle. And you guys, oh, I could use a trip to Vegas. Why not? All I got to do is kidnap this guy, take him to the desert. Sounds like a deal to me. Am I part of the conspiracy between you guys? 
And so uh, can all four of us get arrested for the conspiracy? Yeah, absolutely. I conspired with Joshua, and Joshua conspired with Jaden and Loria, and we have a chain conspiracy. Even though, in, you know, probably more like this, but you get it. So chain conspiracies exist and can be prosecuted, but that is not the only relationship in conspiracies. Anybody read about the wheel conspiracy? Yes. Mm -hmm. We'll put me in the middle. I don't want to put a case on any of y'all. <laughs> so this is me. Well, I have an idea. My idea is I'm going to sell. Uh, I'm going to sell cocaine. So. I, just, I need somebody on the northeast side to sell for me. So I, I recruit somebody and say, here, sell this cocaine. Give me half the money, you keep half the money. Somebody on the northwest does the exact same thing. Somebody in the southwest and somebody in the southeast. And we all, you know, every, individually, I come up with a conspiracy to sell cocaine with each one of them individually. In fact, these folks have never even met each other. Didn't, don't even know anybody. In fact, I told each one of them they were the only one. It's just you and me, brother. We're taking half the money. And I told the other one, it's just you and me. Where do we stand up in spirit? Every last one of you going to be charged. I'm sorry? Every last one of you going to be charged. Every day and twice on Sunday. Even that is a five-person conspiracy, and four of them had no idea, no idea. That, there, that the others existed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really? You'll see a lot. In, I use drugs on purpose. You'll see a lot. Uh, one of the cases that I was involved in was involved, uh, up and down the West Coast. We had an opportunity. Uh, this turned out to be a, a federal case. We had an opportunity to serve search warrants on locations all up and down the, the West Coast. At the exact same time, when the clock struck, whatever time was was the time, a lot of doors got kicked in at the exact same time, and a lot of folks went to jail, and a lot of uh, drugs were recovered, a lot of narcotics were recovered. And since it was all up and down the West Coast, and there were just dozens and dozens of people, part of that investigation was a conspiracy investigation, because they were all conspiring to sell those at different locations. I know, I know the case was like that. Um, in the neighborhood where I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, they hit like uh, uh, three or four houses. What do you call that? Simultaneously. Why do you think that those houses all got hit at the same time? They were all through the same thing and they probably were all selling for the same price. So why not just do them one at a time? No, because then the other one would get an uh, inkling what's going on. Right. <laughs> That's what it yeah. is. So you hit all locations at the same yeah. time? Then folks don't uh, don't start making phone calls. Right. But I want to talk about Warden's rule. Yes. All right. Anybody want to take a stab at it? I mean, you, you took a try. Anybody? You may have an idea of what uh, how this applies. Warden's rule applies to conspiracies. You said it. Uh, in in general, it takes uh, it takes two people to yes. commit a conspiracy, two or more people. But it doesn't. It's not a conspiracy if the crime. Is two or more people, right? That's what you told me. Yeah. Okay. Then we need a crime that takes two or more people. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about back in the 1700s, Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr. What did they do? Alexander Graham Bell. Why are you trying to take care of my people? <laughs> Well, he's from the kite thing. <laughs> you guys know what a duel is? No, that was Benjamin Franklin. Oh, oh, I'm oh, sure him and somebody else. I'm <laughs> sure he was all from the history of Eric Paul the Kite. Uh, if, what's a duel? Right, so you got uh, 
This is going to be the, a really good drawing. I don't want you guys stealing my art. This guy's got a, a gun, and this guy got a gun. I've got a trigger guard and that guy does it. When you have a dispute with somebody back in the day that's big enough, you would say, I want to have a duel. We're going to walk 10 steps away from each other and we're going to turn around and fire, whether it be the old weather days and, or the uh, uh, 1700s or, or, or what. And that's how they settle some disputes. It's a pretty significant way to settle a dispute if you're going to shoot at somebody. But well, that became kind of an issue with uh, with the law. We can't have a bunch of dead people in the streets because we were shooting each other. Is murder legal or is it illegal? It's illegal. I mean, in general, it doesn't matter if you agree to murder each other. It's still illegal. You can't you can't be killing people willy nilly. Is uh, what what the penal code says, I believe. So lots of people are having these ideas. We'll settle our dispute over a duel. So they come up with a law and they said, you know what, murder's illegal already, but let's just make another law. You can't duel either. This is illegal. Even if you even if you both miss, you're both guilty of dueling. We'll create some elements of the crime. I don't have the elements of the crime of, of dueling, but something along the lines of when two or more people uh, agree to settle a dispute through the use of firearms, uh, risking another person's death. You know, something along those lines that they're going to create the elements. But part of those elements, what was the first part of that element? Right, when two people agree to to shoot each other. Can you have a duel with one person? Can one person be guilty of a duel? Yeah. Why? Because the elements say two or more people have to be in a duel. I guess you have a three-way, what do they call it, a Mexican standoff or whatever. But the elements of the crime of dueling are two or more people uh, engage in, I want to take away the agree to, but when two or more people engage in a shooting match uh, at each other, risking death to, to one party or the other. So because of that, the police hear these guys and they hear them in the bar saying, hey, I'm having a dispute with you. You spilled your drink on me. You bumped your shoulder at me and you're looking at my lady. Let's go outside and, 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 and duel it out. And the police intervene and say, ha ha, not anymore. You guys just conspired. You conspired, right? Because you agreed to commit a crime. I even maybe the police let them start taking them, start walking outside but before they got outside. They stopped them. So we have a further dispute. They, they started going there. But the when it comes to meeting the definition of conspiracy, even though we have all those elements, we don't have conspiracy in this case because this specific crime of dueling requires two people. You can't have two or more people conspire to commit a crime that takes two people. You can only have crimes where two or more people conspire, where it would only normally take one. Otherwise, you just don't have it. So you have to have it's part of the conspiring is part of the elements of this crime already. So you can't conspire to commit a crime that would have taken two or more people. The other one is um, in the military. Um, so were you in the military? No? Military fan? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. You're on my military, then, that's why. I was like, you, uh, I was like, I was going to ask if you joined when you were six. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, we have one. Anybody else in the military? Well, you threw off my, my example. I was going to use you. And, all right. Um, so in the military, is it in, in general, in life, is it, is it illegal to commit adultery? If I had a wife and somebody slept with my wife, would, would she be breaking the law or would, would they be breaking the law? But in the military, yes. Military law makes it illegal to commit, to commit adultery. If you're a military member, a military member's spouse is, is not held to that same standard because they're not in the military. Military spouses are not in the military. But a military member who was married, who uh, engaged in relations with somebody else, 
is breaking a law, a military law, and can be charged with a crime. Can you conspire to commit adultery in the military? Can two people come to an agreement and meet each other in a bar and say, you know what, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to engage in relations with you. I know you're married. I acknowledge that. Let's go. Let's go do that. So they have agreement, right? Two people, two or more people have agreed, and then they go to the hotel and they get a room. But before they go inside the room, they got the key. The military police come and scoop them up. So we have, so we have two more people agreeing to commit a crime. Or two. Okay. Two, two more people commit, to agree to commit a crime. Isn't that a crime? Adultery. Oh, in the military. In the military. So, so far, let's go down the elements. Do, do we have two or more people yes. agreeing to commit an unlawful act? Yes. Yes. And do we have an act in furtherance of that unlawful act by going there? Yes. Yes. How many people does it take to commit adultery? Can you commit adultery with just one no. person? No. So, can we have conspiracy to commit adultery? If it's a crime that takes two or more people, then you cannot have a conspiracy. I'm sorry? I said, let me read that room again. That is Wharton's rule. Even though it started out as a conspiracy. Yes. When did it start out as a conspiracy? Did they, when they were conspiring to rob a bank? They were conspiring to commit adultery, which in this situation, I had to find a way to make it illegal. But mm -hmm. only in the military, I think the military is about the only place that I can, I can think where that would be illegal. But we'll talk about another crime. Let me tell it to you one more again. Gambling is illegal in the, the state of North Carolina. So, get my list. My next criminal, Ms. Haswell. Where are you at? All right. You and I decide that we want to bet on this Sunday's football game. We're going to start, we're going to start, we're going to put $100 on, on every football game and we pick our team. Is it technically uh, illegal to do that? Are we, are, we, are we engaging in gambling at that point? I think, I'm like, you know, if you want. I think we, we follow the letter of the law. There's some technicalities there. We're, we're taking the break. It takes two people to gamble, right? I can't gamble with myself. So I can't say, Stephen, I bet the Seahawks are going to win this weekend. And then when the Seahawks don't win, I'm like, ha, Stephen, you lose. And then I pay Stephen. It doesn't work out, right? So I have to have another person in order to engage in this gambling activity. So by definition, if you and I agree to commit a criminal act, a criminal act of gambling, whatever the statute is in North Carolina, we can't commit a conspiracy to commit that gambling act because it takes two people. One person can't gamble with, with themselves. Any crime that takes two people or more cannot, under uh, under that rule, under Ward's rule, cannot be charged with conspiracy. So if you go back to, to adultery, mm -hmm. and both persons were military, and both parties, uh, the man and the woman, or whoever, you know, the sexual partners were. There was a song years ago with something along the lines of it takes two. So, in under Warden's rule, it takes two to make a thing go right. So, under Ward's rule, if it takes two to commit the crime, then you can't have a conspiracy. You can have a crime. Absolutely, two people can agree to commit adultery, or two people can agree to commit gambling and then commit gambling, or two people can agree to engage in a duel, and dueling is against law. And if they do that, they are 100% guilty of that crime. What they can't be charged with is the conspiracy to commit that crime. Now, how many people have taken rock back? Just take one. But if two or more people agree 
to commit that crime that would normally only take one, then they do an act in furtherance, like go to the bank or buy a mask or get a gun or wait. The act of furtherance is, is anything. Sometimes in undercover investigations, the act of furtherance is just, hey, go over there and we'll uh, and we'll talk about it some more. And then when that person says, you know, you have two or more people agreeing to an act, and then the act of furtherance says, hey, uh, go park up there and I'll come meet you. We'll talk about it some more. And then they drive over there. Have they furthered that act? Yeah. In some cases, it is. That's all you now when you write that report, you're like, well. The person wasn't going to say, oh, I was just joking, I was just joking, and they drove away. No, they drove exactly where the, the undercover operator told them to drive to in an act of furtherance. It showed that they weren't joking, they were, they were continuing to act. So, when it comes to robbing a bank, it really only takes one. So, under Borden's rule, if two or more people start talking about it and then do an act of furtherance, then we have a conspiracy, or possibly we continue so we actually have the act. Why is it so? Why do we even have this conspiracy law in the first place? But, if, what is worse? I mean, why, why is one person planning a crime less uh, significant than two or more people? Yeah, that, that, that. So one person so one person is the only person who knows about that's, that's a big part of it. I mean, who can do more damage criminally? More people or less people? More people can do more damage. So the law was written to say, hey, we acknowledge that you start getting groups of people, bands of people, gangs of people to commit crimes, that's going to be that's gonna be bad mojo. So why don't we do something to prevent these plans from even taking place? So that's where the conspiracy laws come in. Excuse me, sir. It was yeah. a scenario on a boat thing. These guys are going to go around the bank. So, uh, so they went in and robbed the bank. You have to get away from outside. The lookout man was outside. Uh -huh. And um, so they robbed the bank, but they, but they deterred from going out the way they supposed to have. They went a different, out a different door with the money and everything. So this guy, he's still standing out there. And um, but, but he didn't even, you know, they didn't come. He didn't, he didn't act on it. Mm -hmm. He didn't act on the robbery. So, would he only be charged with attempt conspiracy, attempting to conspire to rob the bank because he was the lookout person? I don't. Uh, I don't think I've ever heard of a crime of attempted conspiracy because we need to have. How, how can you have an incomplete? If you have an incomplete conspiracy, you don't have the elements. So he be charged with conspiracy. Could he be charged with conspiracy? Even Could though they ran out another door. You don't even know that they robbed it already. They ran out the other door. Let me get to. Uh, it's like you're keeping a watch. You're exactly 20 minutes ahead. Let me. I, 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 let me, I, I, let me I, get there. We talk about co principles. <laughs> oh, so, so, so you're saying that the conspiracy charge would be attempted conspiracy? Yeah. 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 So the only way that that could happen is if you have multiple people that are all involved in the same conspiracy. Other than other than this. Let's go down. Let's downgrade that just a little bit to solicitation. We can think of that solicitation as kind of like junior varsity conspiracy. Uh, who's going to make? I think Joshua's going to make it. So in that case, what happened? I, I, I walked up to him and I said, hey, I've got this problem. Can you help me solve it through the act, through a criminal act? Can you get rid of this, this witness for me? Can you go scare this witness and take him out of the bed? What if? Instead of Josh saying, yes, let's go to Vegas, and then taking uh, Jaden and Gloria and going to Vegas, what if he says no? Do we have two or more people agreeing to a criminal act with an act of presence? No. If Josh, Josh says no when I ask him to go help me kidnap this guy in Vegas, what do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to go find somebody else. Or add him to the list. Or, yeah, maybe he gets up in Vegas. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna. If Josh doesn't say yes, then maybe I go to Caroline and say, Caroline, you want to go to Vegas? I got this problem. And she says no. That's inappropriate. And then I go to Anita and say, Anita, I got the problem. Do you want to go to Vegas? And finally, Anita's like, let's do it. So did did I have a conspiracy with Caroline and Josh? No. Why not? 
No agreement. Because agreement is a huge part. That, that is a huge part element of the crime. What do we have? Solicitation. solicitation. Absolutely. The reason we have a solicitation law is to do it to prevent exactly what I described. Because the law understood, the writers of the law understood that I'm just going to keep trying until I get a yes. So I'm going to ask him to break the law. Even though we didn't agree, I've now tried to encourage him to break a law that he wasn't going to break anyway. That's that's a big part of that. If Joshua's already going to go to Vegas and kidnap this guy, then I can't necessarily solicit him because he was already going to engage in this criminal act. Um, if he was already selling drugs and I said, hey, do you want to sell drugs? And he's already doing it. I can't I can't solicit him to do something he's already going to do. Or we already had a plan to sell drugs. And then I said, hey, do you want to sell drugs? And then we, we could conspire, but we can't. I can't solicit him. So to prevent me from going to Caroline and then going to Anita and until I'm finally successful in this criminal en endeavor, the, the lawmakers recognize that we need to create a law and that law is solicitation. It was unlawful for me to ask him to engage in a criminal act and encourage him to do a criminal act that he wasn't necessarily going to do on his own. So two things that are not necessary for solicitation specifically. Just like conspiracy, the act does not have to be completed. I don't have to solicit him to go to Vegas and then he goes to Vegas because he did and then there'd be a conspiracy. He, even if he says, no, I don't want to do it, and that's the last conversation we've ever had, I can still be liable, criminally liable for solicitation. The act does not have to be completed and he doesn't have to say yes and then change his mind. He can say no. No criminal liability if he says no. If he says yes and we start planning, then we start getting close to conspiracy, we have some criminal liability there. I'm sorry? Asking or encouraging. Asking and or encouraging. Yes. So let's talk about parties to a crime. Are we good on solicitation? It's, a, it's pretty simple. I've, I've talked about uh, conspiracy for so long. Solicitation is super easy. Solicitation is just the very first part of conspiracy where I just came up and asked you and you said no, then we're done. But if you say yes, then we're starting, we're going to start building a conspiracy case. All right. So we'll use your bank robbery uh, scenario with Scott. So we got, we got a bank here. This is the layout looking down. We got the cage here with the money in it, and then we got a bunch of desks here for the tellers are. All right, front door, four. How many people take rob bank? So one person goes into to rob bank and does it right there, picks them up, and then leaves. That one's easy. He's a principal to the crime, right? He's just, he's liable. Principal is what we're going to call that person. Yeah, a principal to the crime. He's got a gun. Add to the story two of his closest robbery friends that each have guns and they all decided we're going to go in and they all drove in together. In fact, this guy drove the car. They all go in and rob the place. They're successful. They take the money and they leave. How many principals do we have? Three. Three co principles. Four people fit comfortably in a car. Driver, front seat, and two in the back seat. These three guys jump out of the car that this guy drove. This guy stays in the car, keeps it running. Same story. They go inside, they successfully rob the bank. No curveballs. They go in, through the use of force or fear, they take the property of another with money, and they come back in, they jump in that car, and they leave. What are these three people? Are they still co-principals? Yes. Yeah, those three people are, are co-principals of the crime. What's this guy? The guy that sat in the car. He's going to be a co-principal as well. Even though he never went inside? Yes, because he had a big one. He wants to play. 100%. We have four co-principles to this robbery. Regardless of the fact that this person never went inside, he contributed to the act of robbery by facilitating the crime. Driving, he is a co-principal. What if we have a fifth 
person jumps out of the car and he runs over here, holds open this door so that three more people can, can run in and, he's, and the fifth person sits in the car. How many co-principals do we have? Five. Five, five co-principals. There's five people robbed that bank. This guy holding the door is not an accessory to a crime. This guy riding the, driving the car is not an accessory to the crime. They are principals to the crime. They robbed that bank as much as those three people that have the guns in there. So my question was, what if they ran, they didn't get back in the car, they ran in another direction, and they didn't come back to the getaway car for whatever reason. Um, what if that he still, would he still be principal of the, to the crime, even though they didn't run the act, didn't have him done running, well, he drove to the there. Let's talk it out. How much liability, how much uh, responsibility in that scenario, if you didn't hear it, this gentleman drives them to the bank, they all run in, we'll take away the guy holding the door. So three people run in, they start to run back out, this door is, is on an automatic timer lock, so they have to run out this and go to the neighborhood, they never get back in the car. Is this person who sat in the car waiting for them to come back as criminally liable? These guys. What are our thoughts? Well, that was probably never gotten there. That's a huge part of it. He drove them there, right? Did he have any less intent? Did his mindset change because of that door? Did he call the police and help them lock the door or something like that? No. He was still robbing that bank. Doesn't matter if it didn't work. There was still the the taking the property of the few use force here. And he facilitated that. He is still robbing that bank. Okay, same thing here. What if? More what if? <laughs> All right, that's the house. And these people jump in the car and they realize that the police are watching their house. Successfully robbed the bank. That is not their house, by the way. Their house is up here. This is where the principal's house is. But there's some police here. The police are watching their house when they after they robbed the bank. So they know they can't go home. So they've got a friend. They look through their phone, they look through their iPhone, they start scrolling, and they realize, ah yes. Johnny Bag of Donuts lives in this house over here. He's cool. He'll help us out. So they drive their car, these guys jump in the car with this fourth guy and they drive all the way to Johnny's house. They knock on Johnny's door, he lets them in, and they're like, here's the deal. We just robbed the bank. The police are at our house. I know we didn't tell you we were gonna rob that bank, sorry about that. But we need some place to lay low for a little bit. Can you, can you hide us for the next two weeks while the police are watching our house and then we'll leave? And Johnny's like, cool, I won't tell anybody. Did Johnny rob that bank? Did, was Johnny inside the bank? No. No. Is Johnny criminally liable as a co-principal for robbing that bank? Did he facilitate the crime of robbing the bank? No. No. Johnny had nothing to do with robbing that bank. He didn't help them rob the bank. The he bank was no. already robbed when they engaged in this conversation. Johnny was made aware of that crime after the fact. So he is now an accessory after the fact. So you'll hear people use that term accessory to describe this door holder, this driver, just whatever, whatever minor part of the crime that you want to call. You'll hear people call that an accessory. That is not an accessory. If you are part of the crime, you are not an accessory. You are principal to that crime. No matter your your the how minor your involvement is, you are still equally liable for that crime. This guy is no less criminally liable than the three who had the guns. The guy, all he did was hold the door. He is just as criminally liable for that robbery. Now, more to the story. There's a security guard here. This guy is a security guard, and security guards wear top hats in my stories. Security guard says, I'm going to stop these guys. 
They can't rob my bank out of my watch. And this gentleman This one right here, this guy, they all three had guns. That guy right there shot our security guard and he died. And then they all jump in the car and they leave. These, this guy jumps in the car, these two with the guns jump in the car, the guy that held the door jumps in the car and the five of them drive back home. Whatever, we'll, we'll leave Johnny out of this one. What crime do we have? We have robbery? We have, we have murder? This guy right here, did he murder that security guard? Yeah. yeah. Who's heard of the felony murder rule? Don't be confused by the name because most murder is a felony, so it's a little confusing. But there's something called the felony murder rule in a lot of jurisdictions being taken away in a lot of jurisdictions too. Yeah. Felony murder rule. I think we can all agree this guy is guilty of murder because he killed the security guard. But this murder occurred during the commission of a felony, a specific felony, a violent felony, not all felonies fall into the felony murder rule. But in general, this one does, robbery, armed robbery. During the commission of specific felonies, if a death occurs, then every participant in that felony is liable as equally liable for the murder of that person. Now, this guy's a murderer. This guy's a murderer. Those two never even pulled the trigger, but they had guns. The guy who drove him there is a murderer, and the guy who held the door for him, all he did was hold the door for him. He's a murderer. And that's where I get confused. I mean, I don't know why. What happened to the Capitol on the 6th of June, was it? Um, the, the person that they arrested, they supposed to have been charged with murder because you had several people to die. And why, why, you know, I don't understand why that has yet to happen. Because I think you need to prove murder. We had a, uh, we had medical emergencies causing the death of others. Heart attacks? We need intent. And, we need uh, murder. We need some intent. And we need to uh, show that the death, like we, uh, I use the example of the termination of a pursuit. Person couldn't be charged with murder because their rounds did not necessarily were not the responsible for the, for the death of that person. Well, the lady got shot. A lady got shot there, and they brought guns and everything to the to the um. They further to the one felony murder rule is jurisdiction specific. I don't know if DC has the felony murder rule or not. Two is only responsible in certain crimes, not every crime. So, for instance, selling drugs is a felony. If somebody dies in the commission of selling drugs, they may not necessarily fall under the felony murder rule because that is not one of the specific felonies that is listed for the felony murder rule. Armed robbery is 100 in there. I, uh, I play it safe when I tell my story, so I make sure it's on the list. So the point I want to make in this is because these are these guys were no less criminal responsibility for the had no less responsibility for the robbery when a murder occurred. They were no less responsible for murder. They're not accessories, they are principles. And if somebody dies, every principal that was involved in that crime is uh, as responsible for that murder. Now, when it comes to sentencing, there's there's some leeway. They can, they're all liable to be found guilty of murder, but there's discretion in sentencing in a lot of jurisdictions, and perhaps when the when the verdict comes down, the judge may give this guy more a more lengthy exposure, a more lengthy prison sentence, or maybe maybe throws a book at all. Maybe this guy gets a death penalty and this guy gets a death penalty. They're they're equally liable for it, and you know if, if you meet those special circumstances, uh, a murder, then the commission of robbery, a murder with the uh, motivated by a monetary gain. Lying in wait, torture, whatever those special circumstances that, that lead to death penalty in, in jurisdictions that have it. Not every murder is uh, it gives you an exposure to the death penalty. You have to have certain uh, criteria, certain special circumstances. So this this would appear to fit some of those. If they ambush the security guard, that would fit it. Maybe this guy gets a death penalty, and these guys all get life in prison. 
Maybe every single person here gets a death penalty. They're all equally liable. The judge has the discretion to the sentence how, how they like. Uh, but outside of discretion, we, the liability is the same. The responsibility. Now, this guy right here held the door. He may never have even known they had guns. He definitely didn't shoot anybody. He didn't even see the security guard. He had no idea that they were going to shoot somebody and that didn't even know that they did shoot somebody when they ran out. Yeah, and he's it. still yeah. equally liable for that murder under the felony murder rule. It's kind of scary. Yeah. That is, uh, when you bring it back full circle, if you don't start on there won't be none. I mean, that's, that's right. you don't, that's the whole point of, of the felony murder, murder rule is that to discourage people from engaging in certain felonies because you just don't know what's going to happen. These felonies are so dangerous that even if you didn't pull the trigger, somebody could get hurt and you're going to be responsible for it as a person who didn't pull the trigger. Today we covered, we had a review of attempts, we covered solicitation as well as conspiracies and parties of the crime. Any questions? Enjoy your time.